In the name of Godzilla's mighty roar, what the hell happened with my last upload? You guys really liked that Kaiju number 8 video, I didn't see it coming at all. Honestly, I'm completely overwhelmed by the response and the awesome comments you guys left me, so thank you so much for that, I really appreciate it. Kaiju number 8 has been on my mind so much lately, and even more so since the last chapter. Having to wait three weeks for the next one is painful, and it's typical that I can't stop thinking about it now. Just when I think it's gone from my head, it comes right back like some kind of kaiju herpes, and BAM! It's all I can think about again. So please allow me to expend some of this energy through the channel by slapping you with another kaiju number 8 video. This time I thought we'd get a bit more technical and I'd like to explain how the fortitude reading system works. Fortitude readings are the defense forces method of classifying kaiju based on aspects like their size, power and or ability to proliferate other kaiju. It's a fairly simple system but it can get a little confusing as classifications and threat levels begin to cross over. So before we dive right in, please do me a huge favor and hit the like and subscribe button down below, give the notification bell a slap so you don't miss an upload and finally play the intro. So what are fortitude readings? As I mentioned before, this is what the Defence Force uses to gauge a kaiju's threat level and assign it a classification based on its overall power. As a quick side note, kaiju come in all shapes and sizes but each of them possesses a core somewhere within them. This core is essentially their weak point as it acts as their most vital organ. The location of the core is different depending on the kaiju's type and some stronger kaiju can even shift the location of their core, just like this bitch did in his fight against Hoshina. Being able to quickly assign classifications to kaiju allows the defense force to dispatch the correct level of personnel and rapidly respond to threats whilst limiting danger. You wouldn't want to send in any trainees fresh off the belt and throw them into a giant kaiju meat grinder, would you? If that was me being sent in, I'd probably just apologise to the big daddy kaiju for the sheer audacity of being born and just fucking piss myself. We can't all be like Hoshina, some of us are going to be cannon fodder. Especially me. It's not currently known whether fortitude readings have a maximum cap, but due to the fact that kaiju emergence is a lot like natural disasters, we can assume that the fortitude scale is probably likened to that of the earthquake magnitude scale. Quick side note, from this point forward unless I say otherwise, I'll be using earthquake magnitude scale as a generalized term. There are actually two objective scales used to measure earthquakes, being the Richter scale and the moment magnitude scale, with the moment magnitude scale being preferred and widely considered to be more accurate. But seeing as all of that's irrelevant to this video, I figured I'd just go over general term. All right, let's get back to it. That means that certain reading thresholds below 8.0 will have specific classifications assigned to them, but everything above 8.0 will all be assigned to the highest threat, regardless of final output. In this case, Daikaiju. It's also worth noting that whilst the fortitude system bears similarities to that of the magnitude scale, the latter can't ever reach 10 or above, with the highest recorded earthquake being a 9.5. Earthquakes are caused by a sudden slip on a fault. The magnitude is directly related to the length of the fault where it occurs. The longer the fault, the larger the quake. Apparently, there are no faults long enough on Earth to cause a magnitude 10 earthquake. And even if there was, rip in pepperonis cause we'd all be fucked. That all being said, Kaiju number 8's fortitude system doesn't have that limitation, as evidenced by the fact that Kafka is already at a 9.8. So I see no reason why we couldn't potentially see a reading go above 10 in the future. Though I imagine if it does, it's gonna be some serious shit and one hell of a showdown. Also, FYI, I didn't know shit about earthquakes until I googled it, so today we learned. Now that we've discussed what the fortitude readings are, how they work and why they're important, let's take a look at the classifications used to rank the kaiju. Starting in the middle, we have the Honju. This class of kaiju are usually the biggest and baddest motherfuckers that the defense force has to deal with. Also known as base monsters, the honju are able to guide and in some cases create smaller kaiju through their proliferative organs. Honju typically have a fortitude reading of 6.0 and above, making them a challenge for your average defense force officer to deal with, especially solo. Think of these guys like a boss monster who brings a lot of trash mobs with them to the fight. Speaking of trash mobs, these tagalong kaiju are classed as yoju and typically have fortitude readings below 6.0. Also known as after beasts, these bitches appear in various ways. They can be created by honju, they can appear in various locations following in the wake of the honju, and sometimes they can even be found latching onto the honju. They usually appear in multiple quantities and need to be picked up quickly by the defense force to keep property damage and civilian casualties minimized. Finally, we have the Daikaiju. These are the big boys. These kaiju have been hitting the gym and eating shitloads of protein. We're talking mad gains to the point of earning fortitude readings above 8.0. Also known as large or mega monsters, this is the strongest category of kaiju and is the one the big man himself belongs to as kaiju number 8. With an epic reading of 9.8, 
Kafka Hibino has the highest fortitude reading we've seen so far in the series. But I wonder how long that can last. Due to their insane power, Daikaiju are able to lead weaker Kaiju, meaning that they would also be classed as Honju guiding a group of Yoju. But those Yoju could also be classed as Honju depending on their fortitude reading. Uh, this is where things could get a little confusing. So let's move on to some practical examples explaining how these classifications work in regards to threat levels. Okay, so the fortitude classifications we discussed before also work in tandem with how the Defense Force assigned threat levels using the same titles. There's a slightly important distinction between the two. A classification here is based on the Kaiju's fortitude reading as well as its defining function in the situation. If we crudely summarize the information from before, Honju are the leaders and Yoju are the followers. Threat levels on the other hand are based purely on the Kaiju's fortitude reading. Let's have some examples. Quick spoiler warning, I will be using information from some of the latest chapters, so if you aren't caught up, feel free to skip ahead to the overall summary. Timestamps in the description. Using the unnamed humanoid kaiju that appears from the end of chapter 23 as our main example, this son of a bitch turns up with an army of wyvern type kaiju, which defines it as a honju and the wyverns its yoju followers. But that's not all. These wyvern type kaiju are all sporting fortitude readings above 6.0, which also makes each of them a Honju class threat. Furthermore, this savage comes out of the gate swinging with a fortitude reading of 8.3, which means that not only is it classified as a Honju due to its minions, but it's also putting out enough power to be a fucking Daikaiju class threat. I hope that pretty much explains things, but just in case, let's have a hypothetical. Imagine we have a bunch of these cute little death machines turn up. They do their thing, call your mama slag and cause general havoc. The defense force reads their fortitudes ranging from around 6.4, making them all Honju class threats. It's strange enough that these things are traveling together, but wait, what's going on? That one Honju has a fortitude of 7.8. It's clearly a cut above the rest. And look, it's emitting some kind of sonar allowing it to control the others. This one's the ringleader. That means all these other Honju threats are also its yo Oh no! Hang on, what's it doing now? It's powering up! 7.9, 8, 8.9, it's, 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 it's over 9,000! The Honju is a Daikaiju class threat! What the fuck? Anyways, I got a little carried away there, but I'm sure you get the picture now. So let's summarize everything we've learned today, team. Kaiju come in many shapes and sizes. The Defense Force gauge the power of Kaiju using their fortitude reading system. Classifications are assigned to Kaiju based on their fortitude reading, and these are Yoju, with fortitudes below 6.0, who typically appear as a result of a Honju emergence, Honju, with fortitudes between 6.0 and 7.9, and Daikaiju, with fortitudes of 8.0 and above. These classifications are simultaneously a way of conveying the overall hierarchy of active Kaiju, as well as their general threat level. In this sense, a kaiju can be classed as both a honju due to its threat level and a yoju due to it following a more powerful honju. And that's it. Wow, this video could have been like five seconds long, but that would have been shit for the channel. So do me a solid and let it slide. Class dismissed. Thanks for sticking it out this long. As I said before, the concept is simple, but I know I tripped up on it for a split second whilst reading. So I thought, why not make a video? Even if you understood the system just fine already, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for putting up with my usual shenanigans. Now we just have to wait a few weeks for the next chapter. In the meantime, please let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like me to cover. All right then, I'm off. Please subscribe if you want to see more from me chatting Bear Breeze about anime or manga or something. Laters.